What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now today, we're gonna to do a full rig walk around. Um, I just got back from doing a little trip up to Vermont. It ended up being a failure because the trail was closed. Um, and all the research that I did said it otherwise, but nonetheless, I just got back, got back last night, but I figured today would be the perfect day to do a full rig walk around. Now we've done a lot of upgrades since the last time that we were on the channel. And I figured that this is the perfect time to go and show you guys exactly what is new and go over everything that has been done up to this point. Um, now, for those of you who are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video if you find it helpful. And uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should, contact21official. Um, on every post I post, whether it's a reel uh, or a post, I put my full content of mods list uh, with the provider and pretty detailed names of the different parts. So uh, we're gonna go through suspension, we're gonna go through wheels and tires, we're gonna go through lighting, we're gonna go through performance, we're gonna go through armor and accessories, recovery gear, navigation, camera gear, all of it. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. We'll start with suspension first. All right, so for suspension, we are running the Nistec 3-inch extended travel kit uh, from Nistec Lifts. And for the front end, we are running the Radflow 2.0 coilovers with 600 pound springs. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here they are. They're extremely uh, salty and dirty right now because of the driving I did yesterday, but those are the Radflow 2.0s, 600 pound springs, and that supports both our front bumper and our winch that we have equipped. Um, and they, they do really well. Uh, in the rear, let's walk back. Now in the rear, we are running Bill Stein shocks with Old Man Emu leaf springs. These are brand new leaves when I bought them. Uh, because my car has about 150,000 miles on them now. Um, I went with whole new leaf springs to keep the back end from sagging and they've been great. Overall lift that's been provided from this lift kit uh, is pretty close to three inches. Um, now the front end is uh, pretty much maxed out. Ooh, I almost, almost slipped there. My whole driveway is a sheet of ice. The front end springs are pretty much maxed out. Um, when I had them installed, they said it, they couldn't really go much uh, taller without uh, compromising ride quality. So um, right about three inches is where we are sitting with the lift kit um, being installed. Now for our upper control arms, the R's, these are going to be our SPC upper control arms. Um, I don't remember the exact uh, item description, um, but I'll make sure to put all of that information in the in the description below if you guys are interested in getting the same ones for your rig as well. And then same thing for the uh, Bill Stein shocks in the rear. I don't remember the exact part number, um, so I'll make sure to put all that in the, in the description for you guys. All right, so let's move on to armor. Now, uh, in the front end, armor that we're running, this is the Expedition 1 Trail Series front bumper. Uh, with comes ready for a winch comes uh, ready for fog lights you can choose different ones that you want from their website it also has different holes for mounting accessory lights on the front and then in the rear I'm gonna walk around this side because it's not as icy in the rear we are running the hefty fab works uh, rear bumper with the tire swing out. Now, as far as this goes, uh, it's not as nice as other ones. It just has a pin that I have to manually pull out. A lot of them, a lot of other bumpers have a, a latching system that works really nicely. And this one just swings out on its own weight. Um, but it has nothing to stop it from going any further. The only reason mine stops here is because I have my high lift mounted here and that actually bumps up against the bumper and uh, prevents it from going out any further, which is actually a pretty good angle. I do I do like the limiting that it that it provides by having the high lift there. Um, yeah, the, uh, so far this bumper has been pretty solid. I do like it. I wish it did have uh, mounting uh, options for as far as 
like different jerry cans, water jugs, gas tanks, that kind of thing. But overall, pretty solid rear bumper. Does come with a hitch. Um, now with this hitch, when I did do my initial towing, I had to actually widen this, um, the pinhole because it could not fit a normal pin through there. Um, so I just took a drill and made it a little bit larger and it worked fine. Comes with the recovery recovery points. Um, I put some D-rings here. Um, they, they've done great. Um, my car came with a four pin harness. I just kind of have it zip tied up here so it doesn't hang too low. Um, but yeah, no, no really a good spot for a wiring harness. I guess maybe that's what this is for, but I don't have a seven pin harness. So this is what we are going with here. Now for sliders, I don't know if you can see the logo. These are white knuckle off-road rock sliders. These are the frame mounted bolt on. They're not welded. I don't know if you guys can see that. They're not welded. They're completely bolt on to the frame. And uh, they've, been, they've been great sliders. They do a good job for being a step. I can fit my, my foot here nicely, stand on the side, put things on the roof. And uh, they do a good job of protecting the doors from other people swinging out as well. Same thing with the plastic pieces on the door there, uh, there as well. And then uh, for skid plates, let's get around to this side. Skid plates, we are running Hefty Fabworks steel skid plates. Uh, I don't have them coated with anything. I probably need to do that. So they are kind of having some surface rust but they have been great skid plates. Um, now, as far as radiator skid and engine skid, uh, my the bumper from Expedition 1 came with a radiator skid and an engine skid. So that is what we're running with that. Um, these are both aluminum skids here. So overall armor has been great. And uh, the steel skid plates help keep the center of gravity a little bit lower. So uh, helps keep the car a little bit more stable. All right, so let's move right into lighting. Um, so with our normal headlights, these are the stock headlight housings. They are a little bit kind of foggy looking, um, obviously because they're dirty, but when they're clean as well. Um, I just did an LED swap, picked up some uh, Lumen lights from Car ID, about a hundred bucks, and they've been they've been great. Um, as far as fog lights go, like I said, the bumper comes with options. Um, so these are the Baja Designs uh, Squadron Pros. These are the wide cornering lens, um, which is exactly what I wanted. They don't shine out too far, but they do throw light pretty much, you know, as wide as, it, as, wide as you want. And, uh, you know, they do a really good job. Very bright, uh, but not excessively bright where people you know, oncoming drivers don't like it. Um, and uh, yeah, so these are, I actually need to adjust that one there. It's a little bit pointed down, but uh, yeah, those have been great. Um, as far as bumper lights here, these are, again, Baja Designs. These are LP6s. Um, what's great about these is they have three different lighting uh, options. So uh, they come with a, a backlight option, you get a low beam and a high beam. Um, so when I, the way I have them wired up is my backlight comes on when I turn on all my headlights and then I have a Switch Pro inside to allow me to turn on the low beams, which is just the bottom two, that's the low beam. And then the high beam is all six. So um, definitely a lot brighter when you have the high beam on. All right, so as far as roof lighting goes, this is the Onyx 6 dual control amber white LED light bar they have. This is the 30 inch bar. What's great about this bar is that because it's dual control, I can control both the amber sections and the uh, white section independently from each other. I can have one of them on or both of them on, whichever one I want, and that's great. So, so far, love, love all Baja designs. Have, as you can see, I'm running a lot of Baja designs and they are Great, the great customer service, great quality, great performance, um, both in off-road, poor weather uh, conditions, and and all of it, all of the above. 
Also guys, if you're interested in any of the setup process, wiring process for any of the lights that I've mentioned, feel free, to, feel free to check out some of the other videos on the channel where I did some how-to on the install of the LP6s and the Squadron Pros, um, and also the switch panel that's inside the cabin. Uh, be sure to check those out if you're gonna do the same thing to your rig. All right, so now to the part I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting for, the wheels entire section. Um, so I just recently upgraded to new wheels and tires. Uh, I was on 33 inch tires previously, uh, but now we're on 35s. And I bet you're wondering how much trimming I had to do. I had to do quite a bit of trimming, um, but let's go ahead and take a look. So these are Black Rhino Raids. They are 17 by eight and a half with a zero millimeter offset. And uh, on the inside, not sure if you can see, but we are running one and a half inch spider track spacers. And they are what give this Xterra a very, very aggressive stance. The tires stick out almost a full tread block, which is probably a good two inches or so. But let's let's go ahead and take a look at this cutting now. Don't make fun of me too much. I did a very sloppy job, and I'm going to clean it up. And I have some uh, some rubber that I'm going to go and outline the, the fender to help help make it look a little bit nicer. But I just use an angle grinder, went up about two three inches on the top here, and just kind of followed this the basic line down here. Now it's covered in ice right now, so it's hard to tell, but. I actually cut back past the slider because um, I'm a rookie, but uh, that does not rub on the slider. Now the pinch seam in here that's welded, um, it was rubbing at that, at full articulation um, of turning the wheel left and right. Um, so what I did, I just took a three pound hammer and I mashed it in a little bit. So I folded it over and uh, now it doesn't rub. Uh, once I get the car washed and everything, I'm gonna go in there clean it up, put some uh, sealant there if I need to, to prevent it from leaking. And uh, yeah, but so far they've been great. Um, don't have any rubbing with a three inch lift with 35s. Now the tire, uh, let's talk about the tire. Cause that's really important. So this is a Mickey Thompson Baja Boss MT. Now you can see, let's see where it says it. Here it is, it's upside down, 35 by 12 and a half. R17 and uh, yeah, 35 inch tires on the Xterra with a three inch lift, not Titan swapped by the way, not Titan swapped, just three inch Nistec extended travel kit. So let's take a look at the rear. No trimming in the rear. Again, with the one and a half inch wheel spacers in the rear. And uh, no rubbing, a little bit close in the front there, but no rubbing. I haven't tested full, at full flex yet. We might need to get some bigger bump stops to prevent it from hitting the fender. Um, but yeah, so far has been great. Uh, yesterday I aired down to 15 PSI when I was running in the snow and the ride is just amazing. Super soft, lots of grip, lots of control. So, so far, absolutely love these tires. Absolutely love these wheels. They are bronze finish. I don't know if you can tell because they're so salty, but uh, yeah, the bronze, actually, I really do like the bronze look. All right, so let's talk about performance mods. So I've done a full exhaust overhaul. Um, I actually burned out my catalytic converters when I was towing a u-haul trailer um, through the mountains of virginia so i had to go ahead and get some new cats but instead of just getting stock cats i went and did the full off-road package um sorry the full exhaust package so uh for headers we are running afe power headers i don't know if you can see them in there i did take out my fender liners but they are afe power headers and then you can kind of see the cats there Magnaflow catalytic converters. Let's take a look at the other side. Mm 
AFE power headers, and Magnaflow catalytic converters, and then for our exhaust in the back, you're running the, let's see if you can see it, the Nismo cap back exhaust for the Xterra. And I do have to say, it sounds sounds pretty nasty. Uh, very, uh, completely opens up the whole system. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen some of my videos on Instagram, um, but it sounds really good. And uh, yeah, so far it's been great. And it, it doesn't drone, no droning, and it's not crazy loud on the highway. Now, if you do like push the pedal and give it some juice, you, you'll definitely hear it. And if you have the windows down, you can hear the headers and it sounds really good. Um, but yeah, so loving the exhaust system. Definitely recommend doing it, especially if you're doing towing. Will help open up the system, help the airflow, and uh, it sounds really good. So um, I'm gonna insert an exhaust clip here so you guys can hear it. And uh, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. So let's talk about recovery gear. Now, the biggest thing everybody thinks about recovery gear is a winch. So let's take a look at this winch. This is the Smitty Built. This is a 12,000 pound Smitty Built winch with a synthetic rope. Um, mounts perfectly in Expedition 1 bumper. Now, obviously I did have to trim the grill a little bit. I need to trim it some more because my plug for my controller goes here and obviously I can't plug it in. And then the, uh, the switch is also behind here. So we'll have to cut a little bit more we'll probably cut kind of like right here and right there to give more access and uh what's cool this midi built winch comes with a backlight so the, the sb here it lights up when i turn on my lights um my regular lights not not any exterior lights um haven't had a chance to really use it yet i did pre-tension it um in the parking lot in the grocery store nearby and uh definitely completes the front end look having the winch there which is great um, both the front and the rear we do have d-rings and the uh, mounting points for the bumpers um, now let's talk about um, ropes and other accessories that we have uh, for recovery um, this is some gear here this is a couple bags I have Keep it right behind my driver's seat so I can easily reach it. Now this is a synthetic rope. This is a uh, Bubba rope. Got it from Amazon. Um, I believe it's the 7 8 rope. And I think it's rated to up like 36,000 pounds or something like that. These are also Bubba rope soft shackles. Haven't had a chance to use these three items yet. Um, but I'm excited to test them out. Hopefully when we get some more snow up here in the Massachusetts area, we'll be able to test them out. Uh, in this side here, I have my winch cable controller, and then inside I have just a standard tow strap with a D-ring. So that's all of that. And then in the rear, which you saw earlier, but we have Max Track. So this is the extreme uh, Max Track Desert Tan. The teeth are replaceable, they're metal. And this is my first set of match tracks. I wasn't expecting them to be this, this solid, but thoroughly impressed. Haven't had a chance to use these yet either, but um, I do really like them. And I I don't really like how I have them positioned because it kind of blocks my left side tail light. So we'll probably mount them vertically or up there on the roof rack or something. Um, but yeah, that's, as, that's it as far as recovery gear goes let's go ahead and jump into the next section which is accessories so let's let's talk about accessories so this is the expedition one uh mule roof rack that's how i'm going to pronounce it uh mule rack um it's a lot wider 
than your standard Xterra roof rack. Um, and it comes, I bought it with the light bar cut out. You can change the fairing, you can get it without a fair, uh, light bar cut out or you can get it with. I chose to get it with. Now, the rack, let me climb up here so I can show you. The rack comes with these black cross members, but these are not strong enough to hold a tent. So what you need to get is actually these silver bars. These are their HD load bars. Um, I got a pair of two of them from their website. Um, they're about a $200 and then you can mount the tent or other heavy duty accessories to them pretty easily. Um, and then this, the CVT Cascadia vehicle tent, soft top, soft shell tent. This is their, let me make sure I get the right information for you. This is their uh, Pioneer Series Shasta tent. Um, it's about a queen size as far as width goes. So it actually opens up towards us this way. And so this is the width of it here. Um, it's about a queen size and then it comes out. It's probably about a king length, king size length um, as far as for leg room goes. Um, so easily can sleep two people, maybe three if you're lucky. Um, I absolutely love the tent. I haven't had a chance to do any winter camping yet, so I can't speak to the warmth of it during the winter time, but we'll get to it. I do have a heater um, that, I, that I got to be able to do some winter camping. Um, but yeah, absolutely love the tent. Um, now, if you notice, I, I bought a memory foam topper and I also keep my sleeping bag in there so you can kind of see that that side is a little bit thinner than that side. And that's because my buckles underneath that keep the tank closed, um, they're just plastic buckles. Um, so they're not holding up very well with the extra stuff in there. So I did, I picked up one of these, a couple of these guys, and this is a, a metal buckle. Um, and we'll, I'm gonna put this on there and that way um, we can test that and hopefully cinch it down a little bit tighter so we can make it, make the profile a little bit smaller, but it's been so cold I haven't put them on yet, but I'm hoping that that uh, helps me keep it a little bit tighter. All right, continuing on, some more accessories. All right, so any good overlander needs a refrigerator freezer in their car. Now this one I just picked up from Amazon. This is an Astro AI refrigerator freezer, 58 quarts. I don't have anything in it right now. Um, dual zone refrigerator freezer. Um, it's been great. Uh, it's not Wi-Fi controllable, like you can't control it with your phone or anything. Um, I just have the standard buttons here. Um, and then as far as power goes, let's see. Let's jump in here and I'll show you. This is a, let's see, let me turn the light on here. So the Jackery Explorer 500. And I have my refrigerator plugged in there. The DC uh, port comes with three USB-Cs and an AC uh, outlet. Um, and I have it set up so every time my car turn, turns on, it charges it. And then I can turn my refrigerator on here by pushing the DC button. And then I can turn my refrigerator on and it'll actually run my refrigerator for a couple, you know, two or three days. Um, pretty efficiently without driving the car or charging it back up. And uh, so I absolutely love it. It's been great, especially for beach trips and camping trips. And you don't have to worry about getting ice and heavy coolers and that kind of thing. And it's, it's been really good. Picked it up on Amazon. It was like $300. Now compared to some of your Dometic fridges that are over a grand it's been well worth the uh the price savings there all right uh so as far as more accessories go let's see um let's open up the back here My hinges are frozen because it's so cold here. Now in the back here, 
this is kind of my accessories bin. We have some seat covers. These are from, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Mahulu, Mahululu rack, uh, racks or something like that. They're neoprene seat covers, so they're great for the beach. Um, so you can sit on your seat with the with a wet bathing suit, sw uh, wet swim trunks, and it won't get your seat wet, won't get, especially if they have cloth seats. Great there. I also have a um, cargo net, bungee cargo net, which is good if I'm gonna be putting stuff on the roof rack. A couple blankets, some extra rope, jack stands obviously, these are three ton jack stands, and they've been, uh, been great. Let's see what else we have. Back. Now this is the camping bin. Keep, keep pretty much everything I need in this for camping as far as kitchen stuff goes. Collapsible bucket for dishes. Some little propane tanks for um, the stove. Thermos. Coffee cup. Now this coffee cup is awesome. Um, I got it when I was in Alaska. You can put it on a fire. You can use it in the dishwasher. You can cook it over, a, use it on a stove. Um, it's been great and uh, absolutely love this guy. Pots and pans, this is a French press coffee. And this is kind of my uh, utensils for cooking, dish soap, other pots and pans, coffee, spices. Uh, this is my burner for my stove um, slash grill. And I can use it as like a normal stove. I can put pots and pans over it or I can put it under the grill to heat my um, skillet, that kind of thing. That's basically it there. I have an axe, another small pillow. Over here we have our chainsaw fuel and oil. Chainsaw is up there. It's a 16 inch Ryobi. It's a piece of crap. Uh, the chain is super at all and I need to get a new one. Um, but it's there if I actually need it. Now this is a Mr. Heater Buddy Heater. I had a chance to use it in the garage the other day when I was uh, working on the car and it is amazing. I run it off of this big propane tank. So I have this conversion hose here. So it does take uh, one pound, um, it does take one pound propane tanks. Um, but I, since I had this big guy, I figured I would convert it to the big tank and use that. All right, back up to the front. Let's hop inside here. Now, in the front, for accessories, they were running ram mount. We also have a Midland wired in radio, which is great. And then here, up here, we have our Switch Pro. Uh, we have our four lights hooked up. So this, these two are for our LP6s in the front. This is our high beam, low beam, and this is our roof lighting. So this is our amber side, and this is our white side. So we can turn both of these on and only one of these at a time. Otherwise you'll overload the system. Obviously have our patches up top. And uh, I think that about does it for accessories. We do have a camping table here that has chairs inside. And then we have our scottle back here which is great and um love that thing it's it's great for camping and those little one pound propane tanks work for that up here we have our smitty built air compressor um, use that for inflating our tires after done on the trail tool tools right here and this is actually just firewood bricks uh, that's what they kind of look like right there and those are really great as well this is the chainsaw here. Again, Ryobi chainsaw, 16 inches. Piece of crap, don't buy it. It's like $100 and uh, should have just, buy once, cry once is what I always say. And, but uh, yeah, let's move on. Navigation, uh, I showed you the RAM mount. Um, I put my iPad in the RAM mount and I use Gaia GPS. I use Onyx Off-Roads, Google Maps, and I also use, um, you probably saw it up here. This is our Garmin InReach Mini. And that uh, provides GPS signal to my iPad so I can track my location. I can also send messages while not having cell service as a SATCOM device. And I also have an SOS button if I need it. 
and it is it is subscription based um, you pay a monthly fee to be able to use it so you can have access to the uh, in reach features but um, you don't need if you just want the GPS signal you don't need it for this you don't need the sub subscription all right I think that about does it I'm looking at my list here all right one eternity later. Oh, one more thing that I forgot to cover. This is our trasheroo. That's pretty obvious what a trasheroo is, but this is our trasheroo. It's quite dirty right now, um, but great for putting your trash in there when you're camping and so you don't leave it behind. Leave no trace, only tire tracks what they say um, and let me tell you these these uh, Mickey Thompson tires leave some pretty sweet tracks I'll tell you that all right final section camera gear so right now I'm filming on my GoPro Hero 9 I also have a GoPro Max which I'm sure you've seen in some of my other videos some of the footage from that I also have a DJI Mavic Pro 2 which is awesome and then I just use my cell phone as well which is the iPhone 13 Pro Max um, but yeah, guys, that about does it for the rig walk around. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I post a lot of reels, posts about my adventures more so than I do YouTube videos. Um, so if you don't follow me there, go make sure to check that out. I post channel updates and other awesome pictures there. Um, all right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys found uh, this video very helpful for you guys when you go to spec out your rigs. Um, I absolutely love the Xterra platform. It's been absolutely phenomenal in everything that I put it through. I think it looks pretty solid and I have to say I'm pretty much done with the build, at least for now and until the next thing comes along. We are, um, I'm sure a lot of you are probably asking, I should have mentioned this when we we're talking about wheels and tires. Am I re-geared? I'm not re-geared currently. Um, stock gearing, and um, as far as performance goes, it's definitely sluggish, um, especially going up hills and in the mountains and stuff. It, it does like the downshift to keep that momentum. Um, but with the exhaust, it, it definitely um, keeps the airflow nice and uh, open. So it doesn't overheat, oil pressure stays low, uh, engine uh, temperature stays low uh, transmission doesn't have any issues it just does shift back and forth a decent amount um, but didn't wasn't any cause for concern but we are going to re-gear um, in the near future just to help it and uh, help with gas mileage and and performance overall um, but yeah back to the outro thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate all the new subscribers I appreciate all the comments. I make sure to read them all and I try to respond to as many as I can. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram. And uh, that'll do it for today, guys. Take care.